Good afternoon, members of the media and the listening public. Thank you all for tuning in and being here today. In a moment, I will introduce the Minister of Tourism and Transport, the Honorable Zane De Silva, who will speak to you regarding the World Day of Remembrance for Rural Traffic Victims, which was celebrated yesterday and is being recognized today. Minister. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Good afternoon, everyone. I'm pleased to be joined today by the Chairman of the Bermuda Road Safety Council, Mr. Dennis Lister III. Welcome, Dennis. Thank you. Thank you. Many of you will know that yesterday was World Day of Remembrance for Road Traffic Victims, also known as WDR. The theme for this year's celebration is Life is Not a Car Part, and speaks to the fact that you can easily replace a car part, but you cannot replace a life. WDR is traditionally held on the third Sunday of November each year to remember the many lives lost and the millions injured on the world's roads and the many families, friends, and others that are affected. The fact that today is now Monday matters not, as the significance of that day matters every single day of the year. The issue of road safety continues to be of concern to Bermuda. Annually, thousands of road users are involved in traffic collisions, and we are not spared the loss of lives on our roads. It is likely that almost everyone listening to or watching this press conference has been impacted by the loss of a loved one through injury or resulting from a road traffic collision either on the roads or in another country. This government remains committed to reducing the number of road collisions resulting from traveling at high speeds, drinking, driving, or carelessness on our roads. In June 2018, the road safety plan entitled Operation Caution was launched as a roadmap to combat the issue of road collisions in a systematic and collaborative way. The goal being to curb unsafe road behaviors resulting in safer roads and a safer Bermuda. We also launched regular roadside sobriety checkpoints across the island, which has proved effective in curbing the incidence of drinking and driving in Bermuda. Despite our success, we still have a ways to go to reach our goal of a 25% overall reduction in road traffic collisions and a 25% reduction in road traffic fatalities. As we enter the last months of this year, many of us will begin planning for the fun and festivities to come. Many will begin their Christmas shopping, looking for places to hide gifts from their children, their husbands and wives and friends or extended family. Sadly, there are many in our community who will look on the holidays with sadness and dread, for it will remind them of what they have lost, the voices they no longer hear, the smiles they no longer see, the hugs and kisses that no longer warm their heart and soul, especially at this time of year. As we enter into the holiday season, I want to remind the public, no, not remind the public, I'd like to remind, not remind, but implore every single member of our community to take the necessary precautions and use the utmost care and courtesy when traveling on our roads. Be alert to pedestrians and ready to give way. Be aware of the actions of other road users. Look in the rear and side view mirrors while riding or driving and before making any maneuver. Clearly indicate well in advance of pulling to the side of the road or turning off the main road. Avoid suddenly turning, slowing down, or stopping for reasons clear only to yourself. Remember that although you may be trying to be helpful or courteous, other road users cannot anticipate your sudden urge to stop and or give way to traffic or make unexpected maneuvers. Please consider your actions on the road and how it impacts other road users. Most importantly, we must slow down and stop drinking and driving. Speeding and drinking and driving are the highest contributors to road traffic collisions and fatalities in Bermuda. Over the coming holiday season, I ask that you make every effort to stop speeding and refuse to drink and drive. And if you must drink, drink responsibly, plan ahead, and either have a designated driver or catch a taxi home. The public will recall last December when the Bermuda Road Safety Council Chairman distributed the designated driver buttons. 
Those buttons are not just for the holidays. Restaurants, bars, and venues across the island will recognize and welcome the designated driver button that you may have on your chest or wherever you want to wear it year round. The designated driver will be guaranteed at least one free non-alcoholic beverage at that venue when they wear the button on their chest. The button allows businesses to easily identify the designated driver and afford that individual the benefit associated with the important responsibility of saving lives. As the Minister of Tourism and Transport, it is my responsibility to continue reversing the trend of dangerous driving practices and increased traffic collisions on our roads. I am committed to making this happen, but I cannot do it alone. We need to change the mindset of our culture to where it's not okay to have a few drinks and drive home. To where friends don't allow friends after an evening of or an evening or a night of drinking to drive home. No one wants to later learn that during that fatal drive, fateful drive, their friend or loved one, life was lost in a fatal traffic collision. The doubt in your mind as you think back and wonder, were they really okay to drive? Or would they be alive had I made them catch a taxi home could haunt you for the rest of your life? The holidays are not yet upon us, but I ask that you start today. If you truly care about your friends and family, when you see they have had too much to drink, make a conscious commitment to tell them, no, you cannot ride your bike or you cannot drive your car home. Because early when we are all committed to change, will we be able to prevent the senseless loss of life on our roads and fully embrace World Day of Remembrance 2019 theme, Life is Not a Car Part. Thank you. Chairman, you want to? Good afternoon to the media, those watching and listening. Again, I would just like to reiterate the comments made by the Minister of Transport and that one life loss is one life too many. And as we head into this festive season, we know that p people will be out participating in events, drinking, socializing. And again, just remember, when you go out to have fun, have a plan to get home safely. Bus, cab, taxi, minibus, or designated driver. And on the designated driver, again, the buttons that were given out last year, they are for all year round, not just for Christmas time. So the buttons are there. If you're a, a designated driver, you're a parent that wants to make sure your children get home safe, you can reach out to us at the road, at TCD, the Road Safety Office, to get a button that, you're, that you or your child can be a designated driver. And again, as today we recognized yesterday, the World Day of Remembrance for Road Traffic Fatalities, today the Road Safety Council hosted a uh, remembrance at Nellie's Walk, and I would like to thank the public those that came out in honor of friends or family members that were lost on our roads. Again, thank you. Uh, Minister, can you tell me if there's any update on uh, efforts to improve public transportation in the late evening hours, especially with the holiday season coming up? Um, gee. Well, without giving away everything that we're doing, you will know that we have a transportation challenge in the country. Um, so to answer your question, uh, if, are we doing anything specific for this Christmas? Not just yet. Um, but you will know that we have been working very hard behind the scenes. Um, after producing the green paper earlier this year, there are many recommendations from the public with regard to transportation, uh, especially during those peak hours. And I think we're all familiar when those peak hours are. Um, but that's coming, so watch the space. Okay, any further questions? Minister, a couple things. One, we, we speak about people drinking and driving, what danger it is. There's a lot of commentary when a fatality happens that discusses the situation of no information being released by authorities on what might have caused the accident. So from the road safety side, we hear about these accidents and fatalities that involve drinking or whatever else, but yet on a day-to-day -day basis when these situations occur, 
no official source is admitting to the fact that certain collisions or fatalities involve drinking or driving, um, drinking or drugs. Are we looking at changing that any time in the future? Well, you mean the actual reporting of what causes the, the accident itself? Co or, or contributing factor, yeah. Um, I think that will there be a change in the future, Dennis? I, I'm not sure because as you will know, especially if there's a fatality, uh, sometimes there, there may have to be an autopsy, there may be a lot of things that have to take place after the fact. So whether or not um, what details are revealed and when, I think is usually a job for the uh, police. Um, so I guess it depends on you know how severe the accident is and uh, what the end result of that accident is. So It just seems like the, the two services aren't supporting each other as far as joining the information together hmm. to drive home the point. You mean drive home the point of what caused the accident? What they the think may have been the underlying involved. cause? And, and like I said, I think if, if it's a fatality, it's a different ball game altogether. Uh, because, you know, one would have to obviously um, um, do an autopsy to find out exactly uh, what happened and what was the cause, yeah. Some would say there's a correlation between the reduction in police patrols and the increase in accidents. Is that something that Road Safety Council is looking at and maybe looking to change? Well, I, I, can, I can speak a little bit on behalf of the chairman, I think, but I think uh, what uh, MP Lister does uh, and his team is they look at all statistics. Um, I don't think they leave any, any stone unturned in that department. Um, what I can tell you is that um, 2018, we had 12 road fatalities. Uh, so far, touch, touch wood, in 2019, we've only had six. Mm -hmm. uh, so I would think that uh, some of the things that the Road Safety Council are doing uh, with regard to awareness, um, I think the road sobriety tests have, have, have hopefully have had some effect. I mean, the stats and, and all of that will come with time, I think, you know, because we, we still need a bit more time to collect data. Um, but certainly the early indications are is that I think the, between the road sobriety and the, the excellent work that, um, that Dennis and his team are doing, I think are bearing uh, a little fruit. Um, so hopefully that will continue. Um, but I know he works very hard and his, his council work very, very hard and about, you know, with regard to bringing about awareness. Can I just sure. jump in? Yes, and yes, to your answer, yes, the message is getting across. Um, as the minister stated, at, as of present today, we are 50 percent reduction of road fatalities from last year. The statistics on road traffic collisions, I don't have the up-to-date statistics as yet. But we can see that the message is getting out there. The people are listening, and it's being effective. Roadside sobriety checkpoints has definitely been a factor to it. It's changing people's mindsets. Um, they're going out and not just drinking and just going driving home. They're having a plan. So the message is getting out there. It's, it's being heard loud and clear, and we just want that message to continue being heard loud and clear so that people, we can save not only our lives, but other people's lives.